everybody. Uh, good to see you all here. Thank you for coming out. To, uh, it's been good to catch up with some mums and bubs and talk about our family boost policy and uh, how that can help them as they think about uh, going back to work and also uh, getting the support that they need for early childhood uh, education. Obviously today was also a big education focus as we talked about uh, banning mobile phones in classrooms and at schools uh, so that we can actually improve academic outcomes and student outcomes for our kids. That is the single biggest the problem that we have in education in New Zealand. We're really determined to do everything we can to remove distractions and, uh, from kids so they can focus on learning and teachers can focus on teaching. Uh, with that, have you taken any questions you may have? No, absolutely not. We have a major challenge in New Zealand around academic achievement. Half our kids arrive at high school not ready to go and at the standard they need to be. Earlier this year, half our 15-year-olds failed the most basic maths, reading and writing test, and New Zealand is outside the top 10 countries in the world. The research is obvious. Other countries have done similarly, including all of the Australian states, uh, and it's actually what's needed to make sure that there are no distractions inside classroom, that learning can be optimised and take place. Well, many principals have been raising this with us for a long time and teachers as well and talking about how it has been a distraction to learning and they are very grateful for the fact that the government is stepping in and saying, look, we're passing a regulation, it's up, leaving it up to schools to comply and to enforce it, uh, but it's going to be very well received and very helpful. Well, the great thing is schools already in New Zealand do that uh, already. Some schools have different processes for how they go about doing it. Uh, we've seen schools in Australia that are large schools, uh, in the UK, uh, in Canada and other places doing exactly the same thing. And so schools can work out how they can, can enforce and comply with the regulation. Right, so if they're already doing it, they're going to need it now. Uh, because not all schools are doing it, and we want to make it crystal clear to everyone in primary, intermediate school and secondary schools that we want no distractions in the classroom, mobile phones, from teachers and from parents have been raised with us consistently. The research is really obvious, whether it's the UNESCO research or research that we've seen in the UK, in Canada and the US, the Australian experience that all says this is having really positive outcomes on student achievement. And that's what we're interested in because we are serious about being a government that delivers results and outcomes. And our biggest issue is academic achievement. If it is really obvious, and if there is, if, if principals are willing to do this, why aren't more doing it? Uh, well, there are, there are many. I was at a school yesterday, a primary and intermediate school. It's very simple. They send a message out to the school community. There's no need to bring your phones to school. If you do need to do so because you want to connect with mum or dad or a carer for a school pickup at the end of school, no problem. You come to school, you drop it into reception, you pick it up at the end. I've well, been to other schools. Why aren't more schools doing it? Well, they may, I'm making it really easy for them to now do it because we're now mandating it and saying in New Zealand we're going to ban mobile phones in primary, intermediate and secondary schools because we want our kids 100% focused on learning and want our teachers 100% focused on teaching. Our academic achievement in New Zealand is appalling, appalling. When we have half of our kids showing up at year nine to go to high school and they're not at the standard they need to be at, that's a problem. When we have half our 15 year olds failing the most basic basic maths, reading and writing test, that's a problem. And when New Zealand's outside the top 10 countries in the world, I make no apologies for this, for this, for this initiative because I really want to make sure we're going to do everything we can to set New Zealanders up for a great future. Do you know how many schools have already been banned or to what percentage? Oh, I haven't, haven't, haven't. No, there's a number of schools that do it up and down the country uh, and you know they've come to that conclusion themselves. But the simple thing is, this is, not un this is not difficult, this is done in other parts of the world. The research is really clear and particularly for low achieving students it has even greater benefits. And I think also by banning it over the course of lunch and recess as well, that will actually help with well-being and also some social benefits too. <laughs> Well, look, at this stage what we're saying is we know that mobile phones has been consistently raised with us by principals, teachers and parents. We know it's a huge distraction and disturbance in classroom. We want to do everything we can to maximise learning. School years are precious and we know that this actually does work and the research supports it and the experience supports it. With respect, with respect to vapes, what I'd say on vapes is that I don't think we have got our settings right around vapes in New Zealand and I'm up for a broader conversation about that too in due course. But I'd want to be able to talk to a number of stakeholders of a bit more depth about that um, as to what we may choose to do. Look, 
Um, I, I, I personally try and manage my phone use myself because I think we're either doing this and I don't like the actual people trying to be on their phone while we're having a meeting at the same time. So typically we have a protocol with our own internal meetings where people are quite focused on the agenda and the meeting that we have before us. Uh, there are times when we actually need the phones with respect to you know, what's happening in the house. But with respect to our caucus meetings, you know, we all go into that meeting once a week, we leave all our phones uh, outside, so there is no distractions and we are focused on the papers that are before us and the decisions that we need to make. Oh, I don't know. That's what we do in ours. That's what we do in ours. So it's what it is. But the bigger issue here is that you know we have a major problem in New Zealand around acad academic achievement, and actually it is unacceptable to be sitting in a first world country in New Zealand in 2023 with abysmal education results. And we're going to do everything we can to make sure we remove those distractions and we get our kids uh, well set up for a future. We owe it to them to do that. Well, it's interesting. Some of the research studies have said there's been a 6.5% improvement in terms of academic achievement and results. Others have said it's the equivalent to up to five days extra a year on some studies. So the studies and the research has been pretty conclusive with respect to it's a distraction and a disturbance that actually stops a kid from staying focused and learning while they're in the classroom. Uh, and as I said, teachers and schools around the world have experienced good results. Interestingly, every single Australian state essentially has introduced a ban on mobile phones. So this is not political. It is not ideological. This is just simply us saying, we have a problem. Let's define our problem in education really clearly, poor academic results and student achievement, and then let's work up practical, common sense, you know, pragmatic solutions to actually deal with that problem. Uh, and that's what this is about. Oh look, we're supportive. Uh, I've lived in countries like Canada and also in the US where there's been English Spanish or English French. We just want to make sure that all New Zealanders have choice and that they can navigate their government uh, and, and use the language that they are familiar with. And the, the government's about to make a decision on sort of further rollout of the bilingual road bikes. I believe it's sort of by the end of the month. Is that something that you think should continue? Look, we're very supportive of bilingual science. Our bigger issue is, however, this is a government that hasn't started and completed a single uh, transport or infrastructure project in its six-year period. There are higher priorities than talking about dual language science at this point in time. We have 54,000 potholes in this country. We have a, a, net, a state highway network and local roads that are in, in a chronic state of disrepair. That's where the focus should be in terms of NZTA uh, and the government's focus on making sure New Zealanders can get around this country efficiently and easily. We're supportive of dual language science by just saying to you it's not the major priority and we have to get really clear in this country when we have problems like we have, let's define the problem and then get really clear on the important stuff that we must be working hard on each and every day. Does the bilingual um, road science come up a lot in the public meetings that you have? Why, why do you think they don't come up all the time, actually. I haven't had at recent meetings, I haven't had that as an issue. But, you know, it, clearly what people are just saying is just make it easy for us so that we can navigate our country uh, in either language that we feel comfortable with. And that's why dual language is fine. We support it. But the major issue is there are more important things, frankly, in roading and infrastructure right now. And like, why spend $30 billion on a light rail project that hasn't even started? It's been six years going. The government spent $140 million on it. You know, meanwhile, we're saying let's spend $25 billion actually making sure we build out 13 roads of national significance and four big public transport and projects. The government, today, the government today has also done, um, announced this plan for the Hogarty Dog. Um, not included in that plan, um, plan is a dam and spalling in the Hogarty Gulf. Um, is that something that you would have to do, Dan? Well, look, I mean, I haven't read the detail of the government's plan. I think it will be important to do so before I comment too deeply because there are a multiple set of stakeholders around the Gulf. But we do support anything that actually protects the Gulf. And so, uh, you know, first, first blanche, you know, first you know, blush, I sort of say, well, yeah, we'll we're, we're be open and we're supportive, but I want to understand the detail very so clearly. No, no, no. Of, of, sort of, I've, wor I've worked to make sure we continue to protect the Hauraki Gulf, which is an important you know, asset for the people of Auckland and also for, for New Zealand. And all I'm saying to you is we need to get into the detail. I haven't seen the detail yet. I'll, I'll have a look at the detail and, and um, we'll have a look at that. Well, we are supportive of making sure we actually protect the Gulf, that's important. But again, the devil will be in the detail and we know with this government uh, there's multiple stakeholders involved and I really would want to understand that before commenting further. Now, you'll excuse me, I want to go back to cell phones. One expert has told the Herald that bans are unhealthy because kids need to manage, learn to manage their cell phone use themselves. And of course, you've just talked about how you 
have to uh, manage your own use and call this in well, let's, uh, So how would you respond to that? Well, let's be clear. We want to set our kids up well for the 21st century and beyond, right? And so that does mean that they need to embrace technology and know how it applies into the workforce and into their life and to be able to integrate technology in that way. But there are plenty of hours outside of school hours where they can play and, and, and get used to working with a mobile phone. Using a mobile phone isn't high use of technology, I'd put it to you. you know, put, uh, getting our kids to do maths and reading right so they can actually code uh, and leverage the power of technology would be a much better focus rather than just saying mobile phones is the way in which we embrace technology going forward in the world. It's just a, it's just what do we all use, right? So don't get too, I wouldn't get too carried away about mobile phones being the great future of how we teach our kids about technology. So you're certainly delineating between cell phones and say a, a Chromebook. Yes, correct. We're saying, you know, our issue has been very clearly that mobile phones have been hugely distracting for our students in classroom in terms of what they end up doing through playtime and through lunchtime uh, and, and the distractions that it causes. And we're just saying, let's ban that because we want our kids focused on actually making sure they maximise their learning. Their school years are precious. Uh, in New Zealand here, our kids have lost a huge amount of time at school and our results internationally are poor and sliding. Well, I think it will make a big difference with respect to well-being and just social interaction. You know, a lot of the feedback I've had from parents and also from teachers has been that kids actually get out on lunchtime and go straight to their screens and they might be watching a streaming service or playing, you know, on social media. But we actually want kids interacting with each other and actually building social connection. And so for us, it's just as easy to say, look, while we're at school, whether it's in the classroom or outside the classroom, in school hours, uh, mobile phones are banned. Uh... The, 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 no, the, the reality is that we have, I've been very clear about this, I mean, I know we've talked about this for many weeks now, uh, we support dual language uh, road signs, we support dual, dual, dual language here in New Zealand, we just need to make sure that every Kiwi has an ability to navigate their government and to be able to navigate and understand what, what is being said. Uh, that's not an unreasonable request. This is quite normal in countries like Canada where you have French and English, I spent three years living there, it's quite normal, you actually have both languages, I didn't speak a lot of French but I could navigate the country by, by the English signs on there. So the same in reverse for people living in Quebec. This is normal. So, you know, dual languages we support, but actually my bigger issue is we're spending all this time and energy talking about that, and actually no one's talking about how difficult it is for people to move around this country at the moment, because this government has chronically underinvested in infrastructure, and that should be the bigger, more strategic conversation that should be taking place around our roading network and our infrastructure. Um, look, I'm not so sure. I mean, the, the reality is the Hauraki Gulf has a huge amount of stakeholders in it. Uh, you know, commercial, recreational fishers, iwi, um, residents, there's a whole, you know, a very broad set of stakeholders and, you know, to actually get consensus amongst that group is important. That's why I want to see the detail of what the government's proposed before I comment further. Well, what I'd say is I would imagine he's got a lot of explaining to do when he's at home over the recess break. Um, I think that would be, um, yeah, I think he's, in, I, don't want to, I don't want to put myself in the middle of that conversation between Sam and his wife, I would have thought. Um, on parental leave, um, do you think there's any merit in the idea of extending the parental Um, I'll let Nicola pass, given her bill recently. Well, the first step is to give flexibility with the entitlements that are already there so that parents can make choices with their own leave. Mm. Uh, the second step would be to look at uh, the length of care that's available and whether or not uh, dads can use it. These are the choices that are available to countries who are growing, who have their books in order, who have fair levels of tax. Right now, New Zealand has $73 billion worth of debt. Our books are in the red. Yeah. We're in recession, and New Zealanders are being overtaxed. Mm. Uh, so any new priority for spending has to be weighed up carefully. This is something that I would love to do. Mm. It's on my wish list. But we have to manage the government's finances well as well. So um, your parental leave policy is the flexi bill that mm -hmm. you put out. Do you have any anything else to come on that, it's specifically in that secondary speaker space? Uh, we will be saying more about paid parental leave uh, during the election campaign. But there is more to come on that? We will be saying and more about it. specifically around that secondary caregiver? Uh, all I'm saying is we'll be saying more about paid parental leave during the election campaign. It's, a, it's an area... That, 
Well, look, I think, I think that um, Labor have already blown their shot on this. The message yeah. they have sent to parents is very clear. Yeah. They think they know best how you should arrange your leave. And actually, I think that parents are best placed to make those decisions. That's Nationals' view. Mm -hmm. And right now, we could be giving parents a lot more flexibility with the entitlements they already have, and the Labour government chose to block that. Mm -hmm. That speaks to their values, mm -hmm. it speaks to their motivations, and it's wrong. How does yeah. this marry up with your policy to make put inflexible, like ban schools, um, you know, ban phones from schools? How is that? How are you, in one breath, saying that we need more flexibility, and yet in the other breath, saying that no, we're doing a total ban? Well, with schools, they're going to have flexibility about how they do that ban, how they mm. execute it, what makes sense for their community. Mm. But the principle is uh, phones off and away. Mm. Okay. Will be able to opt out? Uh, no, no. What will be, will be a very simple regulation that will be passed under the Education Act. Uh, schools then have to comply and enforce that. It will be audited and, and, and compliance checked through Aero uh, as per normal. There are a lot of regulations that schools have to comply and enforce with, and this will just be one of them. Will those regulations allow for, say, uh, instances where phones actually are used for education? Sure. So there'll be exemptions, obviously. There are children that need uh, phones to have access to health needs. If you think about diabetes and other things where that might be necessary for those purposes, and they'll have exemptions, obviously. And there also might be cases where a teacher actually wants to be able to use cell phones as part of a... might be they're taking photographs of a science study or whatever it may need to be, and they will get an exemption from the principal and from the school to be able to do exactly that for that, for that express purpose. So, you know, we're being really practical about saying, yes, there'll be exemptions for obvious reasons, but the message really clearly is, look... I mean, and the research is, 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 is really clear. The experience from schools outside of New Zealand, the experience of schools inside New Zealand that have already banned uh, um, cell phones at school has been incredibly positive. And I think, don't we all collectively want to see our kids do much better? We know we have these major challenges on student achievement. We're starting with that as the problem, and then we're putting practical solutions to deal with those problems. I'll just ask one more question. You yes. you want this to be a political issue. So do you expect cross-party support? Oh, it'd be great. I think, you know, if, if actually, you know, the Labor government looked at the evidence, they looked at the Labor premiers and, and states all across Australia that have implemented the same program. But the point I was trying to make is it's not an ideological or a political policy. It's a practical common sense policy. And that's what we're trying to do in the National Party is have common sense policies that deal with our problems, which if we define them well, we put practical, pragmatic, common sense policies and, and solutions to them. That's what we're doing here. All right. Can I say... <laughs> uh, CAT, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. I've got to tell you, that was a classic day yesterday. I walked into a class of new entrants and there was 15 boys who were very excited to see me. I don't know if I told you, but they wanted to show, they, they thought I was coming in a top hat and a sword. Mm. And, um, and then they proceeded to, do, uh, to tell, talk to me about uh, what they were doing. And uh, then they got very excited about how they could spell words and they started just shouting out spellings to me. So it was a, it was a fun, fun time. Uh, and seeing the exuberance of five year olds is always good fun and very energising. But. Um, but look, I mean, um, but I hope you can get a sense of what we're doing here. We, we care about our kids. We care about the education that they're getting. We want to make sure we're setting New Zealand up for a great future. If we can get our kids better educated, that's how we get higher wages, incomes and salaries for people. And that's how this country moves ahead. And so that's why it's important what we're doing around the cell phone ban in schools. All right. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Take care. Oh.